so just a quick video on um, top knots basically um, quite a lot of people that come on my courses we get taught these knots and it's just one of those things it's quite hard to retain if you're not kind of doing it consistently um, off the back of the course and keeping it fresh in your mind they just kind of slip away um, so mostly for clients that have expressed um, uh, a need for a bit of a recap on those knots so I thought we could do that so I've got my tarp out today so try and keep everything nice and concise so I know exactly the condition it's going to be in this is the way we pack them all around the courses and everything's sort of quick release so we can just get it up nice and quickly just reading um, so the first knot then is a knot that's often called the Ivenk Hitch or the Siberian Hitch um, named after the um, indigenous peoples of Siberia and the way we tie that knot then and this is the first knot we tie is to come around the tree and bring both pieces of cord into our hands so just for the purposes of this video um, I've got what's called the live end so the working end and then I'll refer to the other one as the tarp line or the tarp end just so you know it's kind of going back to the tarp so we've gone around the tree and for the setup I'm going to do somewhere around kind of chest height is ideal we run both into our hands. We then, with a good amount of slack, I've got probably 60 centimeters there, and we pass the live end around our fingers and trap them in a bit of a loop. And we don't let go of the live end, keep hold of that. With our fingers then, we point towards the ground and up over towards the sky to grab the live end. So we basically reached around to grab the live end. And still keeping hold of that, we then try and liberate our left hand out through the loop we made and you can see it forms there a figure of eight knot and we just keep the live end through to give it quick release and that's the knot tied so i'll tie that again really quickly so again we've gone around the tree about chest height and both lines now into our hands we take the live end and wrap it around our fingers holding on to the live end we then drop our hand to the ground and reach up and over everything to grab the live end and then pull that through the loop like that and lock that nice and tight yeah we can then slide up to the tree wherever we want it and the benefit of this knot is if we're setting up hammocks or if you want to tie things up high and it's raining you're not kind of tying something up there letting rain come down your sleeves the whole time and um, you can also tie that knot with, um, with mittens on if it's cold gloves on if it's wet um, so because it's essentially just a slippery figure of eight, but the, the, we tie it in that particular way um, because we can just use kind of gross motor movements. There's no kind of fine fiddliness of the fingers or anything. All right, so that's knot number one. That's the Siberian hitch. Um, the next knot we're going to do is a tensioning knot. And we'll go over to another tree there. Tie that off. Let's see how we get. All right. So we'll go around the tree again, and at this point we want to get the, the, the height of the top nice and even, the ridge line nice and straight, so we pitch that up. All right, so we've gone around the tree. We then need to go around the top line, so taking up the slack, throw all of that over the top line, and we go back around the tree. And as we go around, if I do this on your side so you can see, I cross the strands over there. It basically creates a pinch point and takes a lot of the friction out of it. So that I can now hold all that tension with just a couple of fingers. So we've gone around the tree, around the line, back around the tree. We then come back around the line again. And pinch that there and bring your slack across. We've then created this space here, this triangle, which we can send a loop down and through. And the trick with this is, as you start to pull all these things tight, is to keep all the tension, all the energy in the same direction, this way. So all my pinching, all my pulling, is going with the direction um, that I want to keep the tension on. So we form this loop. If I let go here, this will all come undone. So to lock that off now, we simply take another loop from the bottom here and poke it through that loop there and pull that tight and it lights everything down nice and tightly 
and hold fast. And it's a nice quick knot, it's easy on the ropes, so quite often we'll, um, we'll teach another alternative which is the trucker's hitch, it's much easier to tie in terms of just learning it. Um, but it puts a lot of friction through the ropes and it's, I've seen it done by people, have, especially with a uh, paracord, you just cut straight through paracord for an inch of stitch. So that's why we use that one. And then just make sure these lines are nice and neat that way. Right then. So we've got prussic loops tied onto the tarp here. Prussics are good kind of classic climbers knot, um, but they're great for basically sliding along freely and then holding it in place so I can get my tarp nice and tight along the ridge line and it just fixes there and I leave those on and to hold it out. We then need to do the corners so Lou Peter style here's my peg that I made earlier and we'll undo these loops and take one of the corners out. And now these um, silicon nylon tarps they tend to get a little bit sticky if they've been damp been using these out um, in the rain to just liberate all that stickiness and then we're going to pin this down to the ground now and the pro tip here is if you look at the top what I'm trying to do is find the angle that will give me the nicest lay so if I pull it here you see this line's nice and tight but it's really saggy over there and if I come this way I can make that really tight and this sags off so what we do is we find the middle ground somewhere around there where we've got this strong ridge across the diagonal and there's also a good amount of tension here as well and that's going to go down to the ground here from there yep. so I can let go of that for a second while I put my peg in place and just remember your angles here so the peg always goes steeply right towards the top <coughs> and then we take the Die line around the peg. So this is the third knot, and the last knot we'll be covering today. This is the adjustable guy line hitch. So that final knot that you learn on the courses here, um, we've gone down to the peg and back up, and what we've got then is two sections. We've got the tarp line and the live end here. So this one's the tarp line. This is what we're going to be working on. So what we do is bring it up and lay the live end over the top of the top line to create this cross. What we do is we pinch the cross, like that. It then leaves us this space. And what we do is we reach down through that space, grab the live end and pull it up. We do that once, we do that twice, we do that three times, and my clients will know what song that I sing as I'm doing that every time and that's nice and neat. So the important thing here is we're pulling those wraps onto the tarp line, not the working ends, onto the tarp line. And we form this little um, coil onto there. So we've reached through here three times and form these coils. We now reach over everything and pull the live end over everything. And if we give a little bit of slack to ourselves, we then have this point here, this loop. And it's through that loop that we send the loop. Like a rabbit down the hole, just put that so you can see it clearly. A loop down through that loop and pull tight up towards the top. And it locks there and it should look like a little fist gripping the line. The benefit of this knot is then I can tie that here with minimal tension, but I can ratchet up the tension and make this line really taut. So if we do three more of those, we'll um, set the top up really nice and tight. really necessary to do that. The angle that you pitch your tent pegs at should be sufficient to hold the line in place. And it's that angle that provides you with the anchorage. So the notch um, is just kind of secondary. It's almost for aesthetics really. 
But then just to tie this off again, so we've got our live end and the top line, we lay it over the top to form this cross. So we reach through this gap once, twice, three times wrapped around the top line. And if we need to know that up there, we then go around everything and send a loop down that final loop there. Just like that. Yeah. And then you can really ratchet that down and it comes clean upon the top. So if I take the tension off there a little bit, now that might be as tight as we could get that with something like a clove hitch, but by, by being able to ratchet that tension up, it goes nice and taut. So same thing again, Get the angle right. One of the other benefits of this knot is that you can get up off the wet ground, so if it's really wet, horrible, or if you're in an environment where you don't want to be on the ground, you can just stand up straight away, you're not kind of down at ground level for very long. Tie it again. And then the last one. Another little tip for you, if you find yourself with a big root like that, quite often you can use that to your advantage if you pin on the far side of it, rather than trying to avoid it completely. Quite often you'll find you can um, pinch a temp peg behind that and use it almost like a secondary anchor point. But you can see when you get proficient with these, they just tie themselves basically. And there we are, so that's the tarp set up. It's worth pointing out that knot then that I've just tied, the adjustable temp peg knot. I typically carry in my bag here at least two spare hanks of guy line, just because, um, you know, quite often if we're tying up to trees in particular, I might need to go a little bit further, so having the extra line is good. But also, it means that I've got one for a washing line. So under my tarp, if I want to hang my equipment up for the night, what I can do is tie the same knot. So that adjustable temp peg knot we just tied. If I imagine this is my tarp line, and I tie that same knot one, two, three times around everything through the loop there. Like that. I can then send this under my tarp. tie us the same thing off here and it just holds in place quite nicely so if I uh, if I go and hang my boots on this at the end of the night or something like that and it sags a little bit too much into my living space I can just tension it a little but it's a nice way of just having a little washing line over there as well then um, so another little use for that knot so that's it so that's how we set the tarp up so we've got the event hitch on one side we've got the taut tarp hitch on this side and we've got the adjustable guy line hitch in the corners. Um, all these knots are also on my blog um, with kind of individual articles. So if you find that this video is a little bit too quick or a little bit too speedy or you just find you work better from pictures and text, um, each one of these knots is a standalone article on my blog. Um, so go to howbushcraft.com, look at the blog, and you'll be able to see how we tie each one of these knots. Um, sort of step by step there as well. Thanks very much.